Patagonia is known worldwide for making outdoor gear, but mostly they focus on clothes and outerwear. So when they dropped this $429 bison leather boot, I was pretty intrigued because it is a pretty good looking boot and Patagonia is a pretty reputable brand. So we're gonna cut this thing in half, run through our test and figure out, are they actually work boots like they say? Are they worth $429? Is Patagonia using their good name to sell a bad product? And is this whole eco-friendly angle with this kind of brand just a lie to see more virtuous, to sell a lower quality product at a higher price? That's what we're gonna try to figure out. And if you didn't know, the reason I know so much about leather and can grade it and I've created this whole channel was because before this channel even started, I was doing leather working in college, started a little company, and almost eight or nine years later, here we are still making those same style of products, which include our hand-stitched wallets. Most wallets use a sewing machine. That's why if you pop a stitch, the whole thing falls apart. They use really terrible leather. It's backed by fabric. That's why that, that falls apart. We use nice, thick American tan, vegetable tan leather, hand sewing it with a single needle, <laughs> a single thread, two needles, exactly the way they used to sew saddles together to make those super strong. Because if you pop one of those stitches, the whole thing doesn't fall apart. We also make our micro adjust belts that cause that solve that one problem we all have of it. When you buy a belt, it fits you perfectly. It stretches out just a little bit. Now one hole's too tight, one's too loose. With our micro adjust belts, you can make a tiny adjustment to bridge that gap between the two holes to make your belt fit you perfectly. So check those products out via the link in my description. We make them by hand here in the shop out of the best leather in the entire world. So thank you guys for supporting this channel and our products. I'll put the links in the description. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Patagonia. The style is the Wild Idea Work Boots. Retail for 429. They are made in Portugal, and the way they position this boot is: for years we've sourced human. <laughs> for years we've been sourcing humanely harvested meat for our Patagonia provisions buffalo jerky from Wild Idea Buffalo Company in South Dakota. But it never sat right with us that the hides were going to waste, so we put them to work in our Wild Idea work boots. And I love that concept. I think it's really cool. Instead of just letting those hides go to waste, they're actually using them and putting them inside of a boot. It's that really cool cyclical cycle of uh, making a product and you and reducing the waste as much as possible by creating some value. I love that idea. But how good is the leather? That's what my expertise is, and I happen to love bison leather because we we did a bison boot by JK, their OT boot, which is one of my favorite boots and my favorite Pacific Northwest boot, and I love that leather. It's really durable, it's really flexible and malleable while still being really dur uh, durable, and it barely needs time to break in, and that leather that we saw in the JK boots were, was a real work boot leather at three to 3.5 millimeters thick, which is crazy thick. So how thick is this leather? Well, this comes in at a pretty thin two millimeters, which is even thin for most casual boots, especially especially leaning towards heritage and work. Usually you see about 2.5 millimeters. This is more, this is much more on the casual dressier boot end of uh, the spectrum when it comes to thickness. For work boots, you want at least 2.5 millimeters. But more importantly, this leather just feels really empty. It feels really foamy. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of conditioning and oils worked into the leather. It's really dry and it has like this foamy flaky feel to it where that top grain, this pebbled look, it feels separated from the inner bits and all those fibers. So I'm willing to bet I can, probably just take my fingernail and scratch this top layer of grain off. Yep, it's just separating, you know, and especially if you use something remotely sharp like this caliper. Because it's so empty and it's so foamy, all those fibers have been loosened up to a point where it's ruined the structural integrity of this leather. And you know, it is, it's a cool idea with this buffalo leather being recycled, but it's come at the cost of the quality of leather. I don't think it's the cause of the jerky and coming from those bison, I think it's from the tannery. So unfortunately, that really cool story of the leather kind of has gone to waste because it's not a good leather, unfortunately. And I would expect to see this type of leather in a boot from $150 to $250, definitely not in a $400 boot. And then if we look at the inside, it's unlined up the shaft of the boot like most heritage style boots. It's lined in the vamp and around the counter, around your heel on the inside, which I really, really like. There's a lot of brands that don't reinforce that area and it's an expensive boot and it wears out really quick and then your boots are shot. So really glad to see that there's an actual counter cover on the inside. Then if we pull out this insole, this is where things start to get strange and a little bit obnoxious with this, like the eco-friendly branding stuff, because they say it's cork topped. It's cork technically, but it's a microscopic layer of cork. It's not gonna actually do anything. If anything, it's gonna make the, the insole less durable because it's, and it's not cork. It's, it's like the difference between a solid wood piece of furniture and a veneer topped piece of furniture. You get the look of wood without any of the, the value and substance of real wood. Similar with this, you, it's not cork. It's just, it's the facade of cork. But then if you look underneath, you have an open cell foam. And then this is maybe where a lot of people would assume this is cork. We put the macro lens on it, and I don't think it's cork. I think it's just recycled foam and uh, rubber. 
essentially. For instance, if you actually worked in these, they'd probably only last you a couple months because they're already falling apart and splitting. Just by bending it, you can hear it coming apart and splitting. So imagine if you actually worked in these, like they're positioned as work boots, these, these just wouldn't last long. And so would you rather have an eco-friendly insole that's gonna be thrown to the landfill in a couple months or a higher quality insole that's gonna last you a few years, then it gets thrown to the landfill? What's, what's more eco-friendly? Because to me, there's a case to be made that trying to make this insole eco-friendly is creating more waste by making a product with a shorter lifespan that would need to be replaced sooner rather than a regular insole. And I don't know that for sure with this particular piece of the shoe, but I think it's an important thing to consider with any of these brands that really prioritize that forward-facing, eco-friendly branding, because I just don't think you should ever fully trust a brand on their word, especially with a big brand like Patagonia. Then underneath the insole, you can see that the lasting material, instead of leather, what we'd expect at this price range at 450 or $430, you have what looks like reconstituted leather, which is essentially, they take all the loose fibers from leather, they grind them up, and then they reconstitute with a bunch of rubber to get a, a leather looking and somewhat leather acting material, but it's mostly just rubber. And so once again, you know, it's this eco-friendly way of doing things. We're recycling leather bits and we're re reducing waste. But the problem is with an inferior material that doesn't last as long, it's the same argument. Would you rather have something that looks eco-friendly, that's branded eco-friendly, that doesn't last as long, that your boot ends up the landfill sooner, or would you rather have a higher quality boot? But once again, what's more eco-friendly, using leather or using rubber with little particles of leather in it that's not gonna last as long? And maybe the bigger question is, which is gonna return to the earth easier, sooner, and more efficiently, leather or rubber with little bits of leather in it? Probably leather. And then if we look at the real heart of the boot, the midsole and the outsole, and when I first got these, I thought for sure that the heel stack was plastic and that maybe the, the midsole was rubber, but it might be leather. So we'll see when you get it cut in half. I would hope that it's leather for this price range. But the sole is what's interesting to me because this is a 30% recycled EcoStep sole from Vibram where it has 30% recycled rubber and other bits in there. And I honestly don't mind the look of this because it kind of reminds me of those old school corded outsoles. And I like this tread pattern. It's a nice hybrid of something that looks a little bit slim and sleek and it's slightly more dressy while still giving you enough lugs that you're gonna have grip and be able to actually use these boots. Is it a work boot outsole? Not even close. This is a much more casual outsole. And since it's a recycled outsole, I don't know for sure if it's less durable, but if it's more than 30% less durable than a normal outsole, similar concerns with the rest of the boot. You know, are you actually being eco-friendly by having a 30% recycled outsole if it only lasts half as long and you end up putting two outsoles in back into the environment instead of one singular rubber outsole? There's an argument to be made there. And then to the final aspect of this boot, the construction, and this is one thing they absolutely nailed because I thought for Patagonia, that's not a boot company, I thought for sure they're just gonna do a cemented boot where it's just glued together with a fake welt to make it look like it's higher quality. But on their website, they say it's a Goodyear welted construction. And if you don't know what that is or why it's so great, it's a time-tested way of making boots. The vast majority of high quality boots are built in this way because what it does is it not only glues the boot together, but it stitches the boot together because this outside row of stitching here is an independent piece of leather called the welt. And that welt sews the upper of the boot to the welt and then the welt sews down through the midsole, binding all the most important bits of the boot together with really heavy, strong stitching, if it's actually Goodyear welted, and we don't actually know. So let's cut this thing in half, see what's on the inside, and see if there's any other issues that Patagonia is hiding on the inside of their boot. All right, we got it cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing it because it helps us out a ton. It's what allows us to buy these boots and shoes that are brand new to cut apart twice a week. So let's see what's inside. So 
So there's definitely some good and some bad inside of this boot. Like we suspected, the heel stack and the midsole is a solid piece of leather, which is really good to see. It has a cork filling, which is a pretty thick cork filling. But like I expected, that insole is a recycled material. I don't know if it's rubber or just cardboard. I'm leaning a little bit more towards it's just like a, a reconstituted rubberized cardboard type of material. You also have some fiberboard underneath, synthetic counter, and we happen to just cut right through the middle of a nail that you can see that nails down that heel stack. And usually you see nails going back up the other way in a work boot, but for a casual boot like this really actually is, that's fine enough. So now that we have cut in half, what is good about this boot? Well, I really love the whole bison leather idea from the jerky production. I love the lining and the, especially in the counter. I love the Goodyear welt. I love the cork filling and the leather heel stack and midsole, but, but there's some things that I don't think should be in a $429 boot like this leather. Even though it is that cool bison leather, that cyclical thing, it's a pretty terrible flaky and fragile leather. I really do not like that reconstituted insole. It's just gonna wear out faster and it's it's an integral part of the, the boot and to rebuild that if it ever breaks or splits, you gotta tear the whole boot apart and it's gonna cost you more than just buying a new pair of boots. I'm not fully sold on this outsole even though I like the look of it, but you can see how much recycling is actually going on on the inside of this. Um, I just have concerns about the longevity of it. And then just generally, I think it's not the most attractive looking boot. The, the last they chose is really big and bulbous and the, to the toe is really tall. It's just not the most handsome boot, but that's obviously subjective. So now, are they actually work boots? No, these are not even close to being work boots. They're clearly casual boots. I don't know why they call them work boots. Maybe it's the style that they were trying to emulate but uh, I don't think these last very long for people who actually work manual labor jobs on a manual labor job site. They would not last long. But are they worth $429? I don't think so. I really think these boots should be priced somewhere between $250 and $300. They're around the same quality as Thursday, maybe just a little bit higher quality. Maybe, there's an argument to be made. It's probably like a $250 boot. And I'm sure that these eco-friendly things and these initiatives and materials don't cost two times the price of normal higher quality materials. So is Patagonia using their good name to sell a bad product? I think they're using their good name to sell an overpriced product because it's not a bad boot. It's pretty well boot. It's just really pricey for what you get. But is this eco-friendly angle just a lie to seem more virtuous to sell a lower quality product at a higher price? It sure seems suspicious. It feels like there's some dishonesty going on here. And I, I think there's an argument to be made that they aren't eco-friendly. And just because something says it's eco-friendly doesn't mean that it is in the grand scheme of things. And I don't know for sure, you know, this is all just guesses and take it with a grain of salt, but you really can't fault them for trying and you can't fault them for attempting to make that bison leather cyclical and, and recycle it and get as much out of those animals as possible. I think that's really awesome. I really respect that. And I think despite the issues with this boot, I think it's it's praiseworthy that they're, that they're doing that. It's just a bummer that the leather turned out really bad. So more than anything, to me, the takeaway from this video is just don't trust brands on their word, especially on these really expensive brand products that are positioning products in a certain eco-friendly, virtuous way. Just use your brain, just think about it, just look at the materials and don't blindly trust these brands just because they said they're trustworthy. And I think you could argue at this point forever because there's so many different perspectives. You could take it from the small perspective of just the boots lifetime, take it from the big perspective of the entire leather industry and manufacturing of rubber and all this stuff. It's, it's a tricky conversation. There's no concrete answer. But for me, I just lean towards using high quality, trusted materials and techniques that have been around for generations that you know are gonna last a really long time to reduce your environmental impact in that way. So let me know what you guys think and what you thought of this boot. Is it overpriced? Am I, did I get anything wrong? Let me know what you think and thank you so much for your support. See ya. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support.